Whoa, I just finished drinking my water. It's so hot. And I drink all this water. Remember the bottle, Kids Connection? Yes, it was nice and cold. Oh, I love water. Welcome to Kids Connection, kids. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through activities, fun songs, and Bible stories. Today we're going to be singing a song, I Have a Friend in Jesus Who Loves Me. Remember the song we sang right here, Yo Tengo Un Amigo Que Me Ama? Me Ama, Me Ama? We're going to be singing that in just a little bit. But right now, I want to welcome everyone to Kids Connection. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you and let you know that every Sabbath, we have a new program right here at Kids Connection. So come back, check out new programs that we have fun activities and different stories every Saturday. And if this is, if you are regular, we want to welcome you back. It's so good to have you guys here. Welcome back, kids. All right. So on a hot summer day like today, what better than drinking water, right? Well, did you guys know that in the Bible it says that God is the living water? And without this water that we drink, we will die. And the same way that without Jesus, we cannot survive. That's right. That's say it says that on the Bible. So I hope you guys remember that that Jesus is the living water, the one that that gives us life and eternal life. Well, we're gonna have so much fun together today. Like always, I'm, I have to share something with you that is happening this month in the month of October. Not only here at Vallejo Drive, but all over the place. And I'll share that with you guys in just a little bit. But right now, welcome, boys and girls. I wish you were here with me. Let's go ahead and stand up, get ready to sing our song of the day, Yo Tengo Un Amigo Que Me Ama. That was a good song, wasn't it? I invite you guys to come back during the week. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of our website, graceandconditional.com forward slash Kids Connection and sing the song of the day throughout the week because this is going to remind us about our theme for today, okay? Now I'm gonna invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you because you love us. Thank you for this Kids Connection program. Thank you because you are with us and we ask, we invite you to come in, in our lives, in our hearts, and accept our worship at this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so now that we sang our song of the day, we pray together, let's get our program started. And right now, I'm, well, this is a new month, so it's October. Last month, our offerings were going to one part of the world. 
now we start a new the last quarter the last three months of the of the year our offerings are going to a different part of the world and I, we're gonna share this special place with you now it's a place where it's one of the places that has most people in the world in one single country do you know where that is it's India we're gonna be talking about India today and let's watch and see how the message of God the love of God is being shared with all the people in India let's watch our missionary story today Jesus would have died for just one person of the 1.3 billion who live in India, Bhutan, Nepal, and the Maldives. That's how much he loves the people here in the Southern Asia Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The work of the Adventist Church began in Southern Asia and in India in 1893. Five coal porters, two from America and a family of three from New Zealand, arrived to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The next year brought another missionary, Georgia Burris. The mission board of the Seventh-day Adventist Church paid Georgia's passage from the United States to India. Once there, she was responsible for her own living expenses. But God provided in miraculous ways. Later, she married a fellow missionary, and together they ministered in India for 40 years. From these humble beginnings, the Adventist Church in Southern Asia has grown to 1.6 million members. We praise God for this growth. But the vast majority of people in this region have not yet heard the good news about Jesus. Less than 1% of the population are Adventist. The Maldives, a country of 392,000 people, has no Adventist work. More than 800 languages are spoken in Nepal, Bhutan, and India. We have materials in only a handful of those languages. And yet church members, such as Global Mission Pioneers, are sharing the love of Jesus in communities throughout this vast territory. Urban centers of influence have been established in cities, and thousands are being helped through schools and medical institutions. Sheer Memorial Hospital has been treating the sick in Nepal since 1960, and there are 11 more Adventist hospitals that offer holistic medical care in India. Thousands receive a holistic education at 144 Adventist secondary schools and nine institutions of higher education across India, including Spicer Adventist University. Hope Channel India broadcasts in nine languages, sharing stories of encouragement and inspiration to people such as Rajesh. Overwhelmed with financial difficulties in his family, Rajesh just couldn't concentrate at work. He lost his job and became depressed. One day he came across Hope Channel India's prayer line and asked for prayer. This was the first step in getting to know Jesus and finding hope for his family. He now has a new job to provide for his family. Please continue to pray for the people of India, Bhutan, Nepal, and the Maldives. And pray for the church. With limited resources and in the face of many challenges, it seeks to remain faithful to God's call. Thank you for your mission offerings which fuel mission in the Southern Asia Division and around the world. One percent of people that know Jesus? That's incredible! We need to do something. We need to contribute with our offerings and let people know that God is love. God loves them. And since we can't go there, our offerings can help programs like the Hope Channel to share Jesus with the people in their own language, the way that they understand. So ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries, clicking on the link on our website and donate to the missionaries. Don't forget that, okay? Also brand new I want to share with you guys is that we have a way that you can donate to Kids Connection. Yes, this is a ministry that requires funds, requires money, because we have to pay for certain things and we have to get certain materials. So if you wish that to help our program, you can go to 
the link above. Click on that and choose Kids Connection, and you can ask mom and dad to donate to our program as well, okay? But it's always appreciated when you pray for our service, when you pray for our worship, when you pray for this program. Your prayers are also very important. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, kids. Today, this month, as I said that I was going to share something with you. Guess what we celebrate in the month of October. October is the month that we recognize our pastors. It is Pastor Appreciation Month. So here's something. Here's a challenge I want to present to you. I'm going to invite everyone who's watching this program right now. Right now, you're listening and you're watching. I'm going to invite you to do something special for our pastors. Here at Vallejo Drive Church, we have four pastors. We have Pastor James Kyle. We have Pastor Linda Bishwash. We have Pastor Ben Guerrero. And we have Pastor Lauren Lim. Do you guys remember the pastors from our church? When you watch the service with mom and dad on our website, do you remember seeing them participating as you're going to see them today? Yes? Okay. So here's my challenge to you. Let's do something special for the pastors this month. It, you can start today, okay? Or you can start tomorrow. You can make this as a family project. But I'm going to invite everyone to do something for our pastors. Either you record a message and you send it to us, a message to the pastors saying something to Pastor James, Pastor Ben, Pastor Linda, or Pastor Lauren, or all of them, or I'm going to invite you guys to write a note. Draw a card, um, say how much you appreciate them, say how much you miss them, say something special that you think is special for our pastors. And I'm going to ask you to send those posters to the church, those cards, those notes. Send it to the church. The address is 300 Vallejo Drive. Glendale, California, 91206. It's the address to the church. I'm going to collect all those posts, those postcards, those cards, those letters, those notes, those pictures, those drawings, whatever you guys send to the church. I'm going to collect that and we are going to give it to the pastors at uh, sometime before the end of the month because this is Pastor Appreciation Month. Remember, the month of October, okay? So, deal, I'm going to remind you guys again, but start working on something very special and share with the pastors how much we appreciate them as pastors as they continue to do the ministry here for our church. Deal? Excellent. I look forward to receiving. And if you want to record a little video, send it to me. Send it to the email address, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. And I'll make sure that we'll put something, a nice video together to the pastors as well. Okay? Excellent. If you have any questions, just have mom and dad call me uh, or send me an email. And I'll be happy to work and coordinate that with them. All right. Now, let me ask you something. Who is your best friend? Who's your best friend? Do you have mom or dad as your best friend? Do you have one of your siblings as your best friend? Or do you have someone from school that is, your be that is your best friend? Or do you have a neighbor that is your best friend? Who is your best friend? What do you do with your best friend? Do you get to see your best friend as often as you wish? Now with everything that is going on, do you still see your best friend? Maybe you talk to your best friend a lot more on the phone than you used to. Maybe because you, your best friend, you can't see your best friend or you can't play with your best friend. How are you keeping up with your best friend? What ways do you have to communicate with your best friend? 
when you guys work together, how did you play and how much fun did you have together? I'm going to share something with you now, a short story, okay, about two best friends. They were the same age and they grew up together. They were toddlers, they were babies, and they grew up together as they were... Uh, they lived nearby. They weren't neighbors, neighbors, next door neighbors, but they lived nearby. So their moms were always getting together and they always went to the park together and they went to church together. When they grew up, they started going to the same school together and they were playing together. They went to the same classroom together. They were inseparable. They were like this, everything, everything together every day because it was during the week, school. On Sabbath, they went to school, to church together. And on Sunday, they went to the park together. So it was like every single day of the week doing something fun together. Do you have a best friend that you do that? Hmm, no. Uh, I didn't have a best friend that I could do that. I had some friends, but not like every single day. Well, what happened is that one day, when they were both almost in high school, one of the friends, their dad got a promotion and went to work at a different city far away. They were so worried, they were so concerned, oh no, what are we going to do now? We can't do all the things that we used to do together. We were like brothers and sisters. What are we going to do? Dad moved away. They were very sad. One family was living at a many, many, many hours a distance. And they kept the communication by phone. They emailed each other. They FaceTime each other. They play games on Zoom together and despite the distance and how far they were they still kept the communication that they had they shared their secrets they shared their problems they laughed together they cried together one day when they were going to college they decided that they want they wanted to go to the same college and when they met back at college they were again inseparable just like when they were kids nothing had changed everything was the same let me ask you something why do you think that they were back where they were in the beginning? Why do you think that when they met again, they were still best friends? Just like when they were back in school and when they were kids. Why do you think? Well, if you guessed that it was because they kept the connection and the relationship by phone, by Zoom, by, by FaceTime, by emails, you are absolutely correct. Because they kept their relationship and their friendship going, they shared, their, they shared all their secrets and they continued the communication with each other, they were able to keep their friendship alive. Okay, but if it wasn't for that, if they had never spoken again after one of the friends moved away, and if they have never seen each other or, or uh, uh, written emails to each other to share what was happening, if they had not kept contact with each other, that friendship would have disappeared. In order for us to keep a friendship going, we have to do things together. We have to 
Play, go places, share secrets, tell stories, laugh together, go eat together, go visit each other's friend, each other's houses, and that's how we keep the friendship alive. I have friends nowadays that when we, when I was a kid, your age, we used to go to school, and now I'm still friends with them because we have cell phones. And because we message each other all the time, we keep the relationship, the friendship alive. Friends, there's someone who is my friend. There's someone who's my friend because he loves me. And this someone is also your friend because he loves you. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus is our friend. Jesus wants us to share things with him. He wants us to tell him secrets. He wants us to tell him our problems, our happiness, our joy. He wants us to laugh together and cry together. But in order for us to keep, for you and for me, to keep this friendship going, we need to have that communication. We need to communicate with Jesus, and we need to share things with Jesus, and we need to listen, and we need to read about Jesus. That's how we keep that friendship alive. In today's story, we are going to hear about someone who was a very, very good friend of Jesus, of God. We're going to hear what he did and how, why he was a best friend of God. And just like on our song of today, I have a friend who loves me. He had a friend who loved him all the time. Stick around. After the song, your teacher is going to share the story with you of who this friend was and what he did. Right now, I'm going to invite you to stand up and sing our song of the day one more time. I have a friend who loves me. Let's close our program with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you love us, because you are our friend. And thank you because we can be your friend too. I ask and I pray for all the boys and girls. May they 
always have a place in their hearts for your friendship so they can be friends with you. Bless each one of them. Protect them as we continue now and listen to the story of the Bible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us in an, on another Kids Connection program. I wish, you got, I, I wish you you have a nice, cool day. Don't forget to drink a lot of water. I love you guys so much. I miss you. Stick around for your teacher's program. Until next week on another Kids Connection program. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, kids. How are you? Welcome to our classroom this morning. I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome, welcome. I'm very happy to see each one of you. Wait, well, actually, I'm not seeing you, but I think you're there. So I'm very happy that you're joining us this morning. And welcome. Feel welcome. Give a hug to someone that is beside you. Hug them, hug them, hug them. I can virtually hug you. And I'm happy that you're here. Let's have a word of prayer today. Our Father in heaven, thank you for each of the kids that are joining us this morning. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for everything you have done in their lives. Please bless them abundantly. And please let them know that you love them with all your heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hi kids, I'm really happy that you're joining us today. Why don't we stand up? Can you guys stand up? Stand up? Can you guys wiggle around? I know that you have been probably sitting through Kids Connection and probably you sang some songs, but right now it's the time to stand up, wiggle around, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, stop. Now can you stretch? Ah, uh, stretch. Can you perhaps uh, do three jumping jacks? One, two, three. Good, good job. Okay, so now that we have time to stretch, if you want to go drink water, if you want to take a little pause, you can pause this video and continue later. And now we're going to get to our lesson for today. Probably you heard a little bit about it in Kids Connection. I'm sure you did. But I want to take a moment to say happy birthday to everyone that's having a birthday in October. Everyone that is going to be throughout the month or in the past week, happy birthday to each one of you. If you could let us know that it was your birthday, we would like to mention you during this space. I know of a girl that had a birthday just last Wednesday, so I wanna say happy birthday to Natalie, my daughter. I know that it's her birthday. I don't know when your birthdays are, but if you have a birthday, let me know, send me a message, send me an email. Uh, we have the Kids Connection email. Please go ahead and let us know so, so we can say happy birthday to you. So today, happy birthday, Natalie. I hope you had a great one. So we're gonna talk about a little word that we have talked before. Probably you remember. The word is integrity. Can you go and look in your dictionary what integrity is? What can integrity be? Integrity. It sounds like a very interesting word. Uh, could it be that you do something one time and then you forget about it? Or could it be that you try to act in a moral way in every situation that you encounter? That's a really tough one, I know. You know, sometimes I wanna be as perfect as I can, but I don't, I'm not quite there. But I do love praying to God every day and say, you know, God, I know that I don't have a good temper, but can you help me today? You know, God, the other day I was kind of tempted to see my friend's page and copy that answer. I know that that was not right, but. Can you please help me? Can you give me a new heart? Or sometimes, you know, parents, we get really frustrated in the freeway. Right now, there's not a lot of traffic, but sometimes we're driving and this person cuts our, their way in and we get so frustrated. And then we remember, I need to take a moment to calm down. And it's really hard. It's really hard, believe me. Remember, but being having integrity it comes related also to pleasing God. Hmm. It seems like the Bible sometimes gives us very difficult instructions. You know, 
I try to find something difficult for me to do. So I went ahead and found this book in my library. It's called Programming in Java. Probably you guys know. I just know it by name and that's everything I do. So I've never worked or done anything related to, to Java. I don't do I don't do programming. But my husband does. And he's talking about it all the time. So I kind of know a little details about it, but I know zero about how to do it. So I went and read this book. And you know what? Let me let me just give you an example about what it says. It says, create an input string from a standard input in parentheses. And then if you want to create an input screen from a file or website, then you do in in the word in parentheses string name and the, then close the parentheses. So I'm just seeing like it's a lot of parentheses. But you know what? I just this is the first time opening this book. Do you think it's really easy just opening up a book and understanding something about it? What if what if I take this book and go because I just opened from the middle of the book. What if I just go from the beginning? Oh, it does say your first program. So it is a range so that you can gradually learn how to program. And let's say what is the first phrase that they begin with. Chapter one. Our goal in this chapter is to convince you that writing a program is easier than writing a piece of text such as for a paragraph or essay. <gasps> I'm already excited about it. It says that if I read this book and if I follow the instructions at the end of the 637 pages, I'm going to be able to program something on my own. That is amazing. So I can go from zero to know something be able to create. You know what? The Bible is just the same thing. Sometimes we try to open the Bible one day and we're like, I'm kind of confused. I don't understand what Paul had to go all the way to this Thessalonian city or Corinth, something like that. I don't understand the stories. But what if we go back to the beginning? In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. There you go, you already know how Earth started. That is a great start. And you know, we start discovering how God loves his people and how everything happened to them so they can learn a lesson and they can grow closer to God. If we take little pieces of the Bible, sometimes we think, well, that's not fair. Why, why is that happening to them? I don't like this. I don't like these stories. Why did Jonah had to be swallowed by a big fish? Why? And we kind of get lost between stories. But just as this book, if we go all the way to the beginning, we can see God's love throughout the stories. Every story in the Bible has a love meaning. Sometimes, you know, it's really hard for, and, and I'm not saying that we're going to understand everything. There are things that they're just too big for us as humans that one day we're going to ask God and we're going to tell him, God, why is this happening? I'm not, I'm not sure. But throughout the Bible, we can learn how every character in the Bible learn how to walk in integrity, how to walk closer to God. What happens when you go out in a walk? You know, I've gone through walks just around my neighborhood because right now there's not a lot of things to do, I know. But just to walk around my neighborhood. And there are many times that you can't walk in silence. There you go, you're walking, and then you say, oh, look at that car, it's not parking the right way. You continue parking, and then you say, wow, look at that squirrel, it's running. And you know, you can't. Uh, prevent from saying something there's always something to talk about sometimes the kids they're talking about what they're seeing sometimes thoughts come into their mind and and they want to talk about it and you know when we walk that's a tendency that we want to have a conversation and you know what Enoch is the character of the day he loved going out for walks 
And every day, I can just imagine Enoch walking with God and saying, Hey God, you know what? Today, this person came into my shop and that person was not very nice. And God telling him, I know, Enoch, I know. But you know, Enoch, why don't we show love to that person? And Enoch saying, well, you know, probably you're right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show love to that person. And then the next day, Enoch would, would come and say, you know what? There was this lady crossing the street and she dropped all her groceries. And I just thought, why don't I help her the same way I show love uh, to the other person that I had in my shop? And God said, now you're getting it, Enoch. Showing love is the way. And Enoch probably in his mind was catching all these little things day by day. One day God would show him about love. Another day forgiveness. Another day grace. Another day uh, to be humble. And you know, there were many lessons that God shared with Enoch. And Enoch learned how to please God. Why? Because he walked with God every, every day. You know, we can't just learn to be an, to show integrity just one day. We have to have a relationship with God. Take two minutes. Right now, I'm going to invite you. Just close your eyes and say something to God. Something short. It doesn't have to be long. Something short that keeps you connected with God. When you wake up, wake up and say, Lord, thank you for this day. Be with me. And that's all you have to do. Nothing else you have to do. Sometimes we think that walking with God or how can I please God, it's going to be like this confusing book that is going to be filled with instructions or rules and regulations that we don't understand. But you know, God has given us a lot of ways in the Bible how to be closer to Him and how to walk with Him. We can please God by being close to Him every day. This week's challenge is going to be every day. Open your eyes and say, God, thank you for this day. Thank you and be with me today. That is all you have to do. And just like Enoch, one day Enoch was walking and they were talking and talking and talking and talking and Enoch couldn't just stop talking because he had so many things he had to share with God. And he said, God, you know what? Let me tell you now because of this, this happened today. This little boy was playing in my shop and I helped him. And you know, this little girl was not with her parents and she needed to have a, a phone so she can communicate with her parents and I lend her my phone and of course they didn't have phones back there but just an example and you know what I found this family that did not have any food and I helped them and he just went on and on and on sharing experiences that he had encountered and after a while they realized uh oh where are we wait I don't recognize anything God we're like really far away from home. <gasps> Look at the time. I didn't realize it took us so long. We have been walking like all day. <gasps> oh no, how am I going to get back? This is going to be like really difficult for me to get back. And God said, you know what, Enoch, you are a very close friend. I love every time we talk together. I love that you are a man that shows love all the time. You know what, Enoch? I'm going to invite you to my home now because I want you to spend eternity at my home. Wouldn't that be a blessing? One day God is going to come for us and he's going to invite us to that special home if we walk with him every day so we can grow to love him as he loves us. Show integrity throughout the week. Show your love to others and walk with God. I hope you enjoyed the lesson for today. We're going to have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this day. We want to walk with you today. 
we can't wait to get to heaven so we can have a very long conversation but while we are here on earth we want to please you in everything we do we want to please you and we want to show your loves to everyone that is around us in jesus name we pray amen i hope you enjoy your lesson kids i'll see you next week and remember send me a send me a text mail send me an email um so we can we can share your birthdays here at kids connection and we can also know what are you guys doing at home it would be very nice that you send us a message all right take care kids big hugs to you bye